Look at this phone. It's a powerful phone made by the third largest phone manufacturer in the world, but in the US, you can't buy it. That's because Huawei, the company that makes it, is banned from the United States. This is another phone made by another company called ZTE, but this phone is also banned in the US. And recently, there's been talks about banning something new, TikTok. Set to ban it. The decision by the United States on whether or not to ban TikTok uh, could be coming soon. After India banned TikTok along with 58 other Chinese apps, the United States has been considering... Right now, tonight, a ban on... Chinese social media apps, especially TikTok. Lori, well, viewers should know we're taking this very seriously. We're, we're, we're certainly looking at it. According to Mike Pompeo, the problem is privacy. Would you recommend that people download that app on their phones uh, tonight, tomorrow, anytime uh, currently? Only if you want your private information in the hands of the Chinese Communist Party. But the real reason the US might ban it isn't just about privacy, it's about much more. This is TikTok. On it, you can find videos like these. Disney has been secretly hiding something from you all of your life until now. <laughs> oh, this is sick. Whoever said money can't buy happiness never had one of these. <laughs> Most of them are harmless and innocent videos made by people around the world just trying to have fun, but the problem is who's behind it. Over the past few years, the Communist Party in China has been vastly expanding a surveillance network called Skynet. We can know exactly what happened in every second, in every corner of the city. They use it for things like tracking and publicly shaming jaywalkers. If you cross the street against the light, cameras with facial recognition technology will take a picture of your face, cross-reference it with your government ID, and then post it up there to embarrass you. Finding dissidents or even locating Muslim Uyghurs, who they often send to internment camps that they say is for re-education, but are really closer to detention facilities for millions of Uyghurs against their will. To gather all of this data, China has a number of sources like police officers, hundreds of millions of cameras, and China's largest technology companies. To do this, the Chinese government demands access to private companies' data and they pressure companies to have party members on their boards. One of those large and highly involved tech companies is ByteDance. They own a censored and very influential short video sharing app called Douyin, and they also own TikTok. So given this background, there are fears that the Chinese government could take that data from TikTok and use it for nefarious purposes. But TikTok isn't giving up that easily. They've tried as hard as possible to distance themselves from China. They hired an American CEO, they say they keep American data on American servers, and they promised they'd never give American data to the Chinese government. But still, the US doesn't need something to actually happen. They just need to believe it could, like in the case with Huawei. In 2019, Huawei became the second largest phone manufacturer in the world, even ahead of Apple. But right as it was building ties and attempting to enter the US market, it was banned by being put on the US entity list. That made it so Huawei couldn't work with any US companies unless given written approval. So Huawei couldn't use Google's operating system anymore, they couldn't use Intel's microchips, and nobody could sell their phones. So all this change has brought Huawei phones, in the US anyway, from very good alternatives to basically unusable. The ban has devastated Huawei internationally and new bans are being implemented to stop Huawei's 5G technology from spreading. But the US never actually proved Huawei was definitely stealing data. But the US didn't need proof because the problem wasn't really about stealing data. TikTok and Huawei collect data, but so does Facebook, Google, Twitter, and just about every other app you use. TikTok probably even has fewer data points than the others. On Facebook, you basically are asked to reveal every aspect of your life. Mr. Zuckerberg, would you be comfortable sharing with us the name of the hotel you stayed in last night? Um, uh, no. They want your full name, where you live, what you do, and more. Then they watch to see what websites you visit, and if they have analytics installed, they can see what you buy. If you communicate on Messenger, they can potentially see what you're talking about with your friends, and the list goes on. And that's just Facebook. But still, somehow TikTok is the problem where they ask for your name, which doesn't have to be real, and they might take your email address. Beyond that, they take in data that almost any app can take, like your location, what device you're using, and your clipboard. But according to the US, you can trust American companies with your data, but if it's Chinese, it's bad, because they spy on their own citizens. But whoever said the US doesn't do that too? PRISM is a secret government program that allows the National Security Agency to tap into the data banks of internet companies in search of foreign terrorists. It's about content. It's a program through which the government could compel corporate America. It could sort of deputize corporate America to do its dirty work for the NSA. In 2007, the NSA created a program called PRISM to basically spy on potential international terrorists. But after whistleblower reports from Edward Snowden, it became clear PRISM was actually spying on Americans too. I mean, that's the whole problem that he found with the program 
was that it did massive sweeping dragnet domestic surveillance on people who were under no suspicion whatsoever. This, along with other security laws, has allowed for potentially millions of people to be spied on without ever knowing. Also, in the first half of 2019 alone, the US led the world in requesting data from Facebook on over 50,000 separate occasions, most of which came with a gag order. That means the person whose data was being taken wouldn't know. So if the US will do this to its own citizens, it's clear their main issue isn't privacy. Although it is true China may have different values when it comes to what they'll do with the data they collect, when it comes to TikTok, there's only so much you can do with that data. With someone's location and name, you might be able to track them, which could help you spy on US diplomats or their children. But a simple solution for that is to just have people people who hold important information not use the app. For example, the US military banned soldiers for having TikTok on their devices. But for the rest of the people who use TikTok, the problems won't come from what they give, but instead what they take in. In the past, TikTok has been known to moderate posts in the app to remove posts of people who don't fit their definition of beauty, or people who are poor, or even posts that mention parts of Chinese history that they like to cover up, like the Tiananmen Square protests. So TikTok has deleted several of my videos, and that's fine. I have no issues with that. I totally trust them. I just want to say, TikTok says they've removed these policies, but similar rules could certainly be a problem which could be used to advance China's foreign policy. For example, they could promote anti-Trump videos and censor ones in favor in an attempt to get rid of his anti-China policy. And if they did that, TikTok definitely has the influence to make a change. Previously, users have made TikTok videos that told people to buy tickets to Trump's rally in Tulsa but not show up. Oh no, I signed up for a Trump rally, and I can't go. <laughs> I'm sick. And these videos resulted in a half-empty crowd. But bias can happen anywhere. Even Facebook and Google struggle to manage posts that show bias or false information. So even though it's a problem, censorship isn't the biggest reason TikTok could be banned. Instead, the problem is that TikTok is just getting too big. That's a problem to the US because it's challenging America's dominance in the tech field and Donald Trump has long been against Chinese dominance in any field. I love China, but their leaders are much smarter than our leaders. And we can't sustain ourselves with that. They are ripping us. We are rebuilding China. We could turn off that spigot by charging them tax until they behave properly. And in the past few years, China's power and influence has been escalating dramatically. Its GDP is rising, its companies are spreading, and it's even launching programs to gain military influence throughout the world. For example, its Belt and Road Initiative, which funds infrastructure throughout Asia and Europe, is helping it gain regional influence and relationships. And this rise is a potential threat to American prosperity and democratic influence. And what's happening to China now is very similar to something that was happening in Japan in the 1980s. There their economy was booming and they began to heavily invest in the United States, which caused American backlash. To combat this, the US used tariffs against Japan and they worked to basically halt the country's growth. And Donald Trump was a huge proponent of these tariffs. These other countries that are beating the hell out of us, they're sucking the lifeblood. What we have to do is tax. Now, Donald Trump is using those same techniques to try to take down China as an emerging foreign power who could possibly become more powerful than the US. We take all of their stuff, we don't tax them. They tax us, but we don't tax them. You tax the hell out of them. We have to stop the horror. What's happening is an absolute horror. But this time, it's different. In the 1980s, Japan mishandled its currency, allowing for a market crash to set itself back. But China has learned from that mistake and they're trying everything they can to resist pressure from the United States. And they've already gotten a head start by having a much larger GDP than Japan did and less connection to the US. But still, the US and China are highly dependent on each other to succeed economically but tariffs and bans are working to slowly separate the two countries. And if this continues and China and the US don't need each other, they might try to destroy each other. This idea is leading some people to call the fight between the US and China the second Cold War. And for Donald Trump, getting there isn't completely out of the- We could cut off the whole relationship. Now, if you did, what would happen? You'd save 500 billion dollars. But even if that's where we're going, it won't be easy. When Huawei was banned, it was growing extremely fast, but in the US, it hadn't really become very commonplace. But for TikTok, the case is completely different. The app is already on over 175 million American phones or tablets, and it's become a huge part of American culture. TikTok. 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 So if the US does go to ban it, there could be serious backlash and potentially a loss of voters for Trump in the 2020 election. Additionally, a ban would set a precedent of censorship and a removal of the freedoms we expect on the internet. But regardless of what happens, the result won't be about privacy, but power. Well, the reaction is
very simple. China has been taking advantage of the United States for many, many years. I'm not just talking about during the Obama administration. We can't let that happen. 